Let's take a first look at the Grasshopper interface. If you're opening Grasshopper the, for the first time, there's kind of two ways you could get the interface up. The first would be to click on this little launch Grasshopper icon under the standard tab in Rhino. And the second would be to simply type in Grasshopper into the command line. And you'll get um, a little loading screen and then your Grasshopper window will appear. I'm just going to go and create a new document. So I've got a blank kind of document. And my first tip for you is when you're using Grasshopper, don't go full screen with Grasshopper. You want to use it in conjunction with Rhino. So try and dock it so you've got like a half screen, half Rhino screen, and you can use those two things in tandem. So the general interface is pretty simple. You've got your typical file menu at the top. Then we've got a bunch of tabs with things called components. And I'll talk about components shortly, but they're basically the building blocks of Grasshopper. And then below that, we've got this big gray open space called the Grasshopper Canvas. Navigating the Grasshopper Canvas is pretty easy. You can scroll in and out with your mouse to zoom in and out. And then you can hold the right hand mouse button down and pan to move around the canvas quickly. As I mentioned before, the building blocks of Grasshopper are basically these things called components. And components actually kind of relate to the things that we typically do in Rhino. For example, if I were to create a sphere in Rhino, I would type in sphere into the command line, and I'd get a bunch of options that um, specify how I'd go about creating the sphere. I could click and then define a radius for my sphere. I could do that manually, give it like a radius of 20, hit return and create a sphere. Grasshopper is quite similar, but we get a lot more control over some of these parameters in the sphere interactively. So let's go ahead and try and create a sphere inside of Grasshopper using a Grasshopper component. To create a sphere, let's navigate to the Surface tab and go to the primitive drop-down menu under that. We've got a few options for spheres. I'm just going to go with the typical sphere um, option here. I'm going to click once. You'll see my um, cursor has changed to have a little plus sign, and this is prompting me to drop my first component onto the Grasshopper Canvas. So I'm just going to click here onto the Grasshopper Canvas. So I might zoom in a little bit just to get started. And you'll see two things have happened. We've got a little battery-like object on our Grasshopper Canvas, which is our first component. And then over here in our um, Rhino window, we've got a little red previewed sphere that's occurring. And these things are related. If I click on the sphere, you'll notice it turns green. And that tells me that that's this kind of previewed geometry that um, we've selected in Grasshopper. What I mean by previewed is right now I can't actually select this geometry in Rhino. It's purely a preview. I can't touch it. I can't move it. Basically, all of my transformations will be, have to be happening inside of Grasshopper as we move forward with this. There is a much easier way for us to kind of find objects in um, Grasshopper. So obviously when we want to do something in Rhino, usually we just have a guess. If I want to create a box, I type in box and I get a lot of you know options for box creation basically. And we can do a similar thing in Grasshopper. So I'm just going to delete this guy. If I double click on the canvas and I type in sphere, I'll be able to find the sphere component um, right there and just click and that'll create it then. So once again, you double click on the canvas with your left hand mouse button and just type in whatever you want. So if you wanted to create a box, you could also type in box and create that as well. We're going to keep going with our sphere to begin with though. So most Grasshopper components have some kind of combination of things called inputs and outputs. So these are little kind of nodes that you see in our sphere. And these inputs and outputs kind of give us control over the properties of our object. In the case of the sphere, we have two inputs and one output. And to understand what these are, we can just hover over those, um, the names of those inputs and outputs. So one of the inputs is the base plane, which basically specifies the location and the orientation of our sphere. And you can see it previewed as this little grid here. That's our base plane for the sphere. The R input is the radius, which is currently set to 1. So by default, our sphere has a base plane of just the world XY that you see generally in Rhino, and a radius of 1. And what it outputs is a untrimmed surface. So it's the resulting sphere actually comes out as a surface geometry. So we can actually affect the properties of this sphere by parametrically changing these inputs and outputs. Um, the easiest way to test this is to first create something called a number slider, and we're going to create a number slider that allows us to change the sphere radius. The easiest way to create a number slider is to double click on the canvas, and don't search for number slider, just type in the value that you want um, for your sphere radius. So I'm going to go with a value of 5. And what it will do is create this slider um, with a value of 5, but it has a domain of 0, 
to 10, and I can easily slide it across to change its value. I'm gonna leave it at five for now, and then I'm gonna update this radius of the sphere to be the same as this number slider. So to do that, with my left mouse button, I'm gonna hold coming out of the slider, and I'll get a little arrow. I'm gonna drag that in, and it's gonna snap into the radius of my sphere. So I'm gonna snap and let go, and you'll see that my sphere size has changed as a preview in the Rhino viewport. And that's because I've increased the radius. And this can change dynamically. So as I slide this number slider along, I can dynamically change the radius of our sphere. So there's a few other types of inputs that we could use in Grasshopper to affect things like this. I could create something called a, um, a panel, and panels are really fantastic tools for using as inputs, but also using to see what you've got as an output. So for example, I could make my panel dot by double clicking on it, change it to a value of seven, and plug that into radius, um, and that'll make my sphere a size of seven units. But then I could also plug the S output into the panel, and it'll just tell me that I have um, a surface coming out of this sphere component. So I have one surface. And this is really useful when you've got multiple objects coming out of your component, because then you can clearly see what's actually coming out of the outputs. So we've created a number slider, and this is um, of the type number. And there's like a series of different uh, data types, as we would call them, inside a grasshopper. So as I hover over this radius output, you'll see this little 0.1 icon next to the radius, and that indicates that the sphere wants to take in a number input. The B um, input, the base, wants to take in a plane input, so you can see that based on the little icon as well. And a few of the different data types that you'll be using in grasshopper can kind of be found um, in their primitive um, section up here under geometry. So we could create points, and this will give us a point container, but it also shares the same icon um, as a point. We could create curves. Um, we can create planes, as we know. And points can actually serve as inputs for planes often. They can be interchangeable geometry types. Uh, as we know, we could create surfaces. Uh, we can create meshes. And Quite importantly, we can create something called a BREP. Now, a BREP can be thought of as a poly surface, um, which you'd be familiar with if you're a Rhino user. So just think of a BREP as a poly surface. Surfaces and BREPs can also be used interchangeably as well. So if I plug this sphere into here, it'll light up green um, without any issues as well. So that's just an overview of a few of the different data types that you'll come across in Grasshopper. I'm gonna keep my point container because I'm gonna quickly talk about how these um, simple geometry containers here that only have one input and one output can actually be used to reference geometry inside of Rhino. So if I were to go and create a point in Rhino by just typing in point and just dropping a point onto the canvas, I can actually create a relationship between my grasshopper canvas and this point. So I'm gonna come over to my point container, I'm gonna right click and I am going to set one point. I'm then asked to kind of select an object to reference. So I'm gonna just do a marquee over that point there. And you'll see that this point um, kind of turns, like has a little bit of a red cross on it. So now if I move the point in Rhino, you'll see that it um, its location updates in the Grasshopper preview. So the Grasshopper preview of this point is now tethered to the point physically in Rhino. And now we could go ahead and create a parametric relationship. So a parametric relationship is basically a relationship between two objects that we define in Grasshopper. Now Grasshopper typically reads left to right, so objects to the left of our definition can affect objects further downstream to the right of our definition. And I'll show this in action right now. So this point geometry, um, I mentioned before that points can serve as planes or locations, um, and we're going to basically create a parametric relationship between this point and sphere. So I'm going to plug this point into the B input of sphere, and you see it snaps on nicely. And what that will do is it'll update the location of this sphere to be located at wherever this point is. So what that means is if I move this point in Rhino, you'll notice that the sphere will update as well. And we can kind of easily move that around and see that relationship in place. Let's say we're happy with this sphere now, and we want to bring it into Rhino so we can make it part of our design. Obviously, it's a preview in Grasshopper, and we can't currently select it, but we can actually move it into Rhino through a process called baking. To bake a geometry, just right-click on the icon of your component, 
and you'll find a little bake option that comes up. I'm going to select that, click OK on the panel that comes up, and you'll see you get a baked sphere that represents this sphere that we had in Grasshopper. And it has no relationship to the parametric um, relationships we've built up in Grasshopper anymore. It's just a dumb geometry inside of Rhino. We can also bake components by clicking on the component itself and right-clicking somewhere on the canvas and selecting Bake. And we could also bake multiple components. So if I selected the point and the sphere, I could bake those guys out as well. And I would end up with two spheres that you'll see here, two points in that same point location that you see here.